All right, um, our last presenter for this session is Thomas Anderson from the California Institute of Technology. Uh, his field is applied in computational mathematics, and his advisor is Oscar Bruno. Uh, he did his, pra his practicum at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in 2016, and today he will be presenting on the hybrid method, a high order dispersionless fully parallel wave equation solver at O of one long, long time sampling cost. Thanks. Um, so yeah, so this, this project has been, I've been working on this for a, for a little while. It lies at the intersection of um, transform methods, um, fundamental solution methods, and, and boundary integral equations. So I want to talk a little bit about what the, what the applications are. We can apply it to diffusion equations, elastodynamics, wave equations, Maxwell's, and Maxwell's equations. And these all have the property that they're time domain linear PDEs. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is the scalar wave propagation in RD, which is in all practical examples that I'm going to show right now are in R2, but it's, it's generalizable to um, 3D as well. So this is the wave equation. A uh, typical acoustic problem is to do sound soft scattering um, for this problem. And then, then you have this negative um, UI boundary condition. So that's pretty, a pretty typical problem that you might be interested in. And again, this is all time domain, so it's, it's not a, a, a time harmonic assumption going on. A lot of applications here that I'm not going to talk about too much, but this is a very classical problem that you might be uh, interested in. Um, this, of course, being a, ch a classical problem, it's been studied for quite a while. There are existing numerical methods in areas like finite difference methods, finite element, something called a direct solution, direct discretization of integral equations, and also something called convolution quadrature. So volumetric methods have a number of problems. Um, you have to discretize for an exterior geometry everything, which is imp obviously impossible. So for the exterior problem, you actually have to, have to use something called absorbing boundary conditions, which is challenging and expensive, uh, but it's been studied for a long time. Time stepping is an issue because you have to iteratively uh, progress through time. You generally have a low order accurate spatial discretization and temporal discretization, so it's very expensive to, to, to do much work. Numerical dispersion is always present in finite difference methods, and so multiple scattering is problematic when you want to compute when waves um, re-intersect uh, the boundaries. So I, I don't consider these um, to be useful for me. But uh, Convolution quadrature is another method uh, which has some really interesting properties. Um, what it relies on is that there's this connection with um, the Helmholtz equation, which is the frequency domain problem for wave propagation. And it uses a discrete Laplace transform to discretize, a, to, to transform a, a finite difference approximation in time to a set of decoupled frequency domain problems. And this decoupling means that you can really throw HPC at the problem. If all these uh, Helmholtz equations can be solved independently, you can throw it at a supercomputer and uh, let it compute all of the um, independent problems and then resynthesize. Of course, the synthesization is itself an approximation. You have to use a trapezoidal rule to approximate some complex contour integral. The convergence of the trapezoidal rule is impacted by how close the contour lies to certain scattering poles of the boundary integral equations you're using to, solve, to discretize the, the frequency domain problems. And so it can be, in practice, quite slow and expensive. Of course, it has the, all the advantages that I just described, um, but it, it, in, in a really important way, it uses boundary integral equations, which is a, allows you dimensional reduction. You're not solving on an exterior geometry. You're not doing anything volumetrically. You're solving on, a, on the boundary of your, of your scatterer. It also, you, you, there are a lot of methods for fast frequency domain solvers, which um, it relies on. Um, of course, it has all these disadvantages, and so I, I wanted to look for something a little better. And particularly, I want to look for something that has cheap um, costs for long time simulation, and also it has no dispersion error. And that's what I'm going to talk about next, but I want to briefly mention time degree integral equations. Basically, you have um, a fundamental solution in two or three dimensions, and then you if you integrate this against some density, any, 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 any result will be a solution to the wave equation. Of course, it might not satisfy your boundary conditions, but that's why you solve an integral equation to actually satisfy the, to find the right density for the boundary conditions. This is actually not a very good way to, to approach the problem either, so we want to look for something a little bit different. Um, frequency domain solvers, you're solving the, the Helmholtz equation. Um, these, are the, these are the fundamental solutions for the, for the 
well, the Green's function for the, for the frequency domain problems. And the method of layer potentials allows you a solution in the frequency domain, which, again, it's just, just like in the, in the time domain problem, but only in frequency domain. You can, you can get your solution, and then you still have to solve a boundary integral equation to find the right density. And there are various formulations you can use, and I'm not going to talk about that too much. Um, but the hybrid approach I'm going to describe here is um, a time domain simulation technique which uses Fourier transformation. And it gives you the same decoupling where you are taking your time, you're producing a time domain simulation on the basis of decoupled frequency domain problems. And you resynthesize all of those frequency domain problems through a Fourier transform. The questions you have then are how do you exploit the hybrid approach for high performance computing? And that's obvious. You just um, solve each problem in independently, so it's trivially parallelizable. But the real questions are what quadrature rule do you use for this Fourier transform? And how many frequency domain problems do you actually need to solve? And what's the relationship of that, um, that cost to the time that you want to produce the solution at? Um, I'm going to describe a new qu um, quadrature rule that we, we, that we developed for this problem. But first, I want to explain why maybe the, tra the trapezoidal rule is not what you want to do. Uh, so this is the trapezoidal rule. It's a classical method to um, produce the solution to any periodic, um, in uh, any periodic integrand, but also, of course, for band-limited um, functions. So if you, if you do this for the Fourier transform, you get this, you get this discretization. Unfortunately, you see that you, they have this um, exponential in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the result, and this is periodic. And so since it's periodic, it's going to be um, a problem, and you have, to, you have to handle that. You have to just fi more finely discretize in omega, which is a frequency domain, and that's obviously expensive. So this is not a, a good solution for long time simulation. Um, it also requires a global regularity for the frequency domain solutions, which is actually not true in two dimensions. Uh, it is true in three dimensions, but it's not true in two dimensions. And you require, it requires periodicity, such as band limitedness. Um, for high order convergence, you get low order convergence even for the non periodic case. The qu quadrature method that I'm going to describe um, just it takes the function um, u, that maybe the solution to your integral equations, uh, and you expand the integrand in a new basis. You expand it in a Fourier basis. So you produce a Fourier series, and then you actually integrate term by term um, with this Fourier series. And so this is your actual approximation. Your um, interpolating using Fourier series, and then the in actual integration itself is exact. And so you get these, the, the, the sum for, for each solution t. And actually, this is something called a discrete convolution. It's actually not quite a discrete convolution. Um, due to the scale factor, it's called, it's called a scaled convolution. So you can't use standard fast methods for this. Um, I want to talk about something else. You can generalize to, to non-periodic problems as well. You use something called Fourier continuation, which gives you a, a Fourier series interpolant, which is of high order, even when the function is not periodic. And then the same story applies, and you can um, produce the, the quadrature. Um, this has a number of attractive features. But first of all, with the discrete scale convolution, you can still accelerate to FFT speeds something, using something called a fractional Fourier transform, which I don't want to get into, but it's something that you can get to, down to m log n time instead of um, m squared. Um, but the crucial thing is that this, only, this method only requires a order one Fourier coefficients for large time. So you don't have the problem that you would have had with convolution quadrature or with using a trapezoidal rule quadrature for this, for, for this approach. It's also dispersionless by, by design. And you get high order or spectral convergence um, as well. Here's a um, convergence plot for the quadrature algorithm itself, which shows you pretty much what you expect to see, uh, spectral convergence uh, for some typical problems. Um, and so I, I, can, I can summarize with, some, with the overall hybrid algorithm, which produces the, the, the solution U ba uh, for, for, for an incident field U inc, solves frequency domain problems for relevant uh, frequencies, and computes the, the frequency domain solutions, and then inverse, tr inverse transforms to find the time domain solution. There's some uh, subtleties in 2D, which I don't want to get into. You have to use some singular quadrature rules near omega equal to 0. And that's not a big deal. So here's an example um, solution. You have a plane wave um, of, of many frequencies, actually, impinging on a kite-shaped scatter. And this, this is a fully time domain solution. And it's also just, it's, it's really just sampling. So it's not progressing iteratively through time. You're just sampling a bunch of 
time domain solutions and, 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 and stitching together in a video. In particular, I could, I could compute the solution right here at order one cost, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't cost me anything extra. I wouldn't have to compute the entire time history. Uh, as far as convergence of the overall algorithm, um, I have some nice solutions, uh, ni ni nice convergence results. This is the time trace of a solution behind the scatterer. And this, you might not be able to see the, 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 the Y scale, but this gets you something like t 10 to the minus 14 error. Before this, the, the, this method that we're introducing, you could only get maybe two or three um, digits of accuracy. So this is a significant improvement. There is a problem for long duration um, incident waves. Basically, the Fourier transform becomes highly oscillatory when you have long, when you have long uh, times. And so you get something like this Fourier transform, which is, would be very expensive to discretize. Um, and we, have, we, we, used, we developed something called a temporal partition of unity to resolve this problem. Essentially, you, you split your, your incident wave into a number of pieces, and then you can use, use Fourier time shifting properties to reuse incident data from each individual piece of the, um, of the simulation. And then you can use um, plane wave expansions to um, represent general boundary conditions. Um, and, then, uh, and the same story applies. You're just solving frequency domain problems for each, um, for each partition. So this is a smoother, uh, this is after you do, do the time partitioning, these are the Fourier transforms, they're much smoother, so they require fewer frequency domain uh, solutions. Um, you just reconstitute the, the, the solution using each time partition, and, 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 that's, uh, and, and then you're home free. Um, one thing that's really interesting about this partitioning is that you don't actually have to evaluate each partition over the entire spatial domain for every time. You can compute the boundary integral densities in time, and then you can use geometrical considerations to see when the, scattering, the scattered field vanishes um, due, to that, due to that window. And so that's something that I'm going to show next. But here's, um, here's an example of a, very, of, a, of a time incident wave that's very long. Um, it's also complex. It's a linear chirp incident field. Um, so it's pretty complicated. This could not be solved with, ex with previous methods. Um, this is solved on a, on a university cluster. Um, this, is the, this shows the time tracking properties of the method. Uh, so the top left corner shows the total field due to all the win windows that are in the field. The, each of the other frames shows various active windows as they become active, and then, they, they, then, they, then they're determined to be not contributing to the, to the overall solution. But, and so the overall solution is still um, correct. So this is an enormous sp uh, speed up for, for our methods as well. Here's an example with the Whispering Gallery. Um, this is a miniature version of something you might find in like the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago has one of these. And you can, speak, you can, you can talk at, um, in one of the foci of the ellipses that this, that this follows the contours of, and you can hear the whispering on the other side of the, um, of the gallery. So this, is, this, this had never been done before, but it's a high frequency uh, wave scattering problem in time domain, which has not really been considered. Um, most people consider it a Gaussian bumps, which is very low frequency. Um, and then, Again, this is dispersionless, so um, the overall accuracy of the method here is maybe 10 to the minus 6 or 10 to the minus 7, possibly. So this is um, quite accurate. And this can be solved on a, on a small cluster. I want to acknowledge uh, the Department of Energy and the CSGF program, uh, the Krell Institute, my advisor and collaborators. Um, my practicum advisor, Sanyo Kula, we worked on, worked on something completely different, but I want to thank him as well. And I want to thank the many fellows and alums of the program. And uh, I guess we'll open up for questions. <laughs>